We've been doing this once a month where we have lunch and we learn about a specific missions activity. Uh, we will not have lunch today, but there are treats uh, for you to take home. Uh, but we'll still hear from, we're live. All right, I'm starting. <laughs> and I'm still wearing my mask. Good morning. Welcome to Worship with Aldersgate. So good to see you. Oh, usually I do this before we start. There we go. Glad to see all of you uh, joining in online and those of you here in the room. Today is the day that the Lord has made. It is a gift to us. All right, somebody's got their volume up. That's good because it means that people are um, in the room are tuning in online as well, which is good. So we can all say hello to one another. Just as a side note, last week I was the uh, producer on Facebook, so I was watching Facebook here from the room, and it was the first experience I had of the whole community all together, both in person and online. It was wonderful. So I do encourage you to take out your phones and say hello to the people joining us remotely. Here in the room in January, we are um, not singing out loud. We're singing in our hearts. And uh, before I turn it over to Johnny and the band, I want to ask you a question. You've heard of good news. You've heard of bad news. It's all types of news. How many types of news can you think of? How many adjectives for the word news can you think of? We're going to talk about news during the message time. All right. Over to Johnny. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, online and here in person, we are glad to be here today. Um, as Rachel said, we're not singing today, but let's all just stand and sing in our hearts in solidarity as we um, offer the word of God has spoken with our lead singer, Lindy. Forever, power of sin is broken. We 
Amen. Amen. Oop. Thank you, Lindy, Johnny, band. Beautiful. Johnny, I know you and I are both children of the 80s a little bit, and I was right back there at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of 80s since. Yes. Nice, a nice touch. Um, so as we're gathering, I'd like to invite the children forward and uh, remind the adults of our question. What type of news are there? Bad news, good news, other news? What types of news? Also, if you have prayer requests this morning, please drop them in the comments on Facebook. They're going to be assembled together into a prayer of the people at the end. Good morning. How's everybody? Good. It's good to see you. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm glad you're here. Hey, look at my shoes. What do you think about that? I'm going to have to move the camera so people at home can see my shoes. Them off. The thing about these shoes is that they're easy to take off their slippers. Look at my slippers right there. They make a cat. Isn't that great? These are, I wore these for a couple of reasons. Number one, my birthday was yesterday. Did you say happy birthday? <laughs> my birthday. This is my birthday present for my loving husband. And they are actually absolutely completely the same replacement of my former pair of slippers just like this that I have worn out during the pandemic because these are my favorite shoes, pandemic shoes. I think that's true for a lot of people, a lot of slippers. Yeah. And today after church we're having someone come from Nevin's Farm, which is an animal rescue, an animal care place, and we are collecting cat food um, for Nevin's Farm. Did you know that they have a food pantry for pets? I never knew that either, but they do because sometimes people have a hard time paying for uh, cat food and dog food. So we're collecting a whole lot of cat food today. But the biggest reason that I wore these slippers is because I absolutely love them. And they're super comfy cozy. Do you see the, um, how fuzzy they are? Inside? And it just feels so wonderful to put them on and have my foot be warm and it's nice. It's, it's not like wearing fancy high heel shoes that hurt your feet. They're just comfortable. They're just good. You know, sometimes in life there's little things or big things that are nice. They're just good. And I think that sometimes we forget to stop and say, wow, that's just really nice. That's great. And to tell God thank you. You know, I think that sometimes, you know, like when you call your mom or your dad, if I go, mom, is everything right or is there something wrong? There's something wrong. Yeah, that's right. Dad! Right or wrong? Yeah. Something wrong. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of times when we call out, it's because there's something wrong. And that's the same with God. We say, God, why is this happening? And why didn't this happen? And why am I sick? Or whatever it is. Why is school like this? What's going on? Why is my friend mean to me? And we cry out when things are wrong. That's really easy. But when do we cry out and say, wow, that's great. So here's my okay. The day after my birthday, saying, God, these slippers are great. Thank you for a really nice thing. Yeah, and maybe even when you're at home, you could call out and say, Mom, Dad, just wanted to let you know things are great. Thank you. And they'll be surprised. <laughs> All right, so um, we have pretty neat uh, Sunday school today. Today is, um, is to make Cat toys, what's going on? To make cat toys. So um, lots of cat things, lots of good things, lots of things to say, God, thank you. Thank you for this good thing. Thank you for cat toys. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for giving us good gifts. Help us to stop for a moment, Lord, just to thank you and be grateful and joyful. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to let you in on a secret. It's really hard to recruit um, 
scripture readers right now because um, the chances of someone saying on Wednesday, yes, I'll read the scripture, and on Sunday them saying, sorry, can't come to church, are really high. So I'm reading the scripture this morning. However, if you would like to read the scripture next week, you just let me know, and we'll put it 50-50. We'll see, see if it happens, all right? Um, as a reminder, if you have prayer requests this morning, please drop them into the comments. Uh, we'll put those in the pastoral prayer. And a restatement of the question, what kinds of news are there? Please hear the scripture reading from the prophet Nehemiah, chapter 8, between verses 8 and 10. These are excerpts. So on the first day of the month, of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women and all who were able to understand. He read it aloud from daybreak till noon as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men, women, and others who could understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra opened up the book. All the people could see him because he was standing above them, and as he opened it, all the people stood up. Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. They read from the book of the law of God, making it clear and giving the meaning so that people understood what was being read. Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest and teacher of the law, and the Levites were instructing the people and said to them all, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people had been, been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. Nehemiah said, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks, and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Here ends the reading. Let us pray. Lord God, we are grateful to be gathered together as your people, both here and online, now and later. God, thank you for sending us this community as a gift to us to encourage our faith, to help us to grow, to experience friendship and support. God, I ask that you would be with me as I speak this word. Thank you for this word. That you would be in the hearts and the minds of each who are listening, God, and apply the message directly and specifically into our lives. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. I just realized I forgot to take off my cat slippers. So I'm a little cash this morning. <laughs> Look at that. Never preach my cat slippers. What types of news are there? When um, I was a sophomore in college, I lived in a dorm that has since been renovated, um, but it's a really unusual arrangement. Like normally you think of a college dormitory, a long rectangular building, right? Four stories tall. You would expect that you would walk in the front door and then walk down the long hallway of the first floor, right? And that you would take the stairs and there would be another long hallway for the second floor. This dorm, this is a true story, was designed as a women's dorm about 140 years ago, 130 years ago. And because women are too social and, you know, would prefer to talk and visit rather than study, this is true, they're like, no long hallways for the women. If the women have long hallways, they're going to get nothing done because they're going to be visiting the whole time. So instead, they, you had one long hallway on the first floor, but to get to the next floors, you, there were columns, right? You couldn't walk straight down the hall of any other dorm or any other floor. You went up into columns, and there were four rooms on each floor off of a column. So essentially like five towers going along this dorm to prevent all the chit chat. Okay, that's very nice. <laughs> Isn't that anyway, there were so many doors in this dorm because of the stairwells and because of the entries to all the different rooms and because of fire safety. The door, I'm going somewhere. The doors were held open with electromagnets. Okay. So you can imagine a dorm with twice as many doors as you can expect, all standing open, held by magnets. So what would happen when the smoke alarms would go off? The door is closed, right? Somebody who works in a hospital knows this. The, the magnets let go, and all the doors slam shut. So what happens when Susie Q, or Jimmy J, because now, by now it's a co-ed dorm when I'm there, 
burned some popcorn in the microwave way over there in column E. I'm in column A. What happens? All of the smoke alarms go off. All of the doors release. They all slam. And this smoke alarm was the most ungodly siren. I mean, literally li could, could wake teenagers from asleep. Yeah, it had to be really loud. And, and they would go off frequently because popcorn would be burnt frequently. And this was back in the very old days, and there was a smoking lounge in there. And occasionally that would cause a problem. How many fire drills did we go through? How many fires? None. Okay. I, we got so attuned to the alarms going off. It was so stressful, like your whole body would react because they were so loud. That first, we would hear a tiny click, click those magnets would let go. Bam! Boom! Like this. Click, and your whole body went, because <gasps> you knew, right? We hated those smoke alarms. Can somebody please fix? Could somebody please lower the volume? Could somebody please make them not so sensitive to burnt popcorn, right? We came to hate those fire alarms. But are those fire alarms bad? Are they bad? We don't like them, but are they bad? Some things that happen, some messages that are brought to us in life are very upsetting, right? We don't like to hear them. We have even maybe a physical response. We have an emotional response. We're irritated and we're upset. But it's very important information for us to have. Let me tell you about what was going on in that scripture lesson. Nehemiah. You know, it's funny because we have like a Noah in the congregation. I'm looking around. We have a Joshua here, right? We have some nice uh, biblical names sitting around us. Nehemiah is not one people tend to use for their children. I'm not really sure why because he was a great guy. Actually, I think we all would have gotten along with this one. Um, the setting is like 450 years before Jesus. Um, the Israelite people, the Hebrew people, have been sent off, most of them, into exile in Babylon during the Babylonian Empire. Then the Persians take over. Cyrus, a uh, king, interesting figure in himself, says, hey, you know what? I think that's fine if the people from the land of Judah, if these Israelite people want to go back. That's great. Let them go home. So in waves, they start returning to their homeland. And the first thing they do is they build the temple back because it's so important to them. But somehow they kind of aren't able to get it together to build the wall around the city, which is totally necessary to keep their very mean, taunting neighbors from bothering them. Right? So it's like they had this initial burst of energy, built that temple, but they're just kind of discouraged and can't quite finish the job. And the people around them are really giving them a hard time. Nehemiah is not there. Nehemiah is really close with the new ruler, this one, another name rolling right off the tongue, Artaxerxes, uh, the Persian king Artaxerxes. He, he works with him. He's, he's, uh, he's like working in the White House, right? He is the cupbearer, which means that his job is to bring wine to the king. So he does this every day, maybe multiple times a day on a bad day, right? He's right in the presence of the king, and he hears the news of his people back in Jerusalem, who've built the temple, but are just discouraged and upset and depressed and kind of not doing it. You know, it's, it's like going home sounded like such a good thing, but somehow they haven't been able to thrive there. He hears this news and his heart breaks. And so Artaxerxes looks at him, maybe before having very much wine, and he says, you look upset. What's going on? He says, what's going on? He says, please let me go back. Please let me lead the effort to rebuild my people's place. And Artaxerxes says, sure, and he gives him a whole bunch of resources as well. That's a key part, um, access and materials and things like that. So that's who Nehemiah is. He's a sommelier, a wine expert with great leadership skill. So he goes back, and he organizes the people, tremendous administrator, kind of like Marilyn. Where's Marilyn? You and he, definitely, the wine and the administration. Best friends, best friends, yeah. True, Nehemiah, right there. If female, I'm casting you, Marilyn. Anyway, so he goes back and he encourages the people a great deal. He gets different um, tribes and different parts of the community to build different parts of the wall and gets it done in like 52 days. 
like amazingly quick. It was very inspirational. And now it's like it didn't just build a wall um, of, you know, physical strength of that town, but it built their, their community strength. They, they had some pride. They had some energy. And he says, okay, well, so now it's time to do worship the right way. We haven't been doing that because we've been discouraged and we've been depressed. Nehemiah is the governor now. So he gets the priest, Ezra, and he says, let's, let's hear the scriptures read to us. We haven't been doing this. We haven't been practicing our faith in like three generations, four generations. Let's do this. Like not, not corporately like we had been before. And so Ezra opens up the book, right? And keep in mind, it took me a minute with this. Like, what do you mean people hadn't heard the book of the law? What do you mean? Didn't they read it? No, they didn't read, right? They had to hear it read to them. The priests were the ones who were literate. So if the priests hadn't been standing up reading to them, they weren't hearing it. And they were forgetting stuff along the way. They remembered some things, omitted other things. So Ezra stands up, reads this for the men, women, and children assembled. And all of a sudden, people hear that they have not been doing what God wants them to do. They thought they were, maybe they were trying from their memory, but all of a sudden they're realizing we have been really falling short on some of the things that God has been asking us to do. And they're devastated. And they start to cry. Now this is where the real gift of this lesson came to me this week. When news hits you hard, when it makes you unhappy, when you have that physical response, when you sort of hate it, what do you do from there? Nehemiah and Ezra together were great and godly, wise leaders. They saw the people crying, and they said, listen, it's hard news. You're feeling upset. You should not be upset. I'm going to read it to you. Go find it again. Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks that's that wine part again. And send some to those who have nothing. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. God is doing something important and good and necessary with this news. Thank God for it. Thank God for it. When the smoke detectors go off, ultimately we thank God for that. It's hard, but we thank God. As I was meditating on this, I was thinking a lot of times we feel like there's bad news, you know, the news that makes you go, holy cow! But maybe what Nehemiah is saying to us is it's not just holy cow news, but holy news. That when we hear things that are upsetting, when we feel bad, that God is doing something holy. And so how did the people respond? Because they were coached by these wise leaders, they were like, okay. And they took that deep breath and they said, let's thank God for this difficult news. And they went forward and instituted a bunch of religious reforms. They made a new holiday, the one, if you have Jewish friends, where they build the booths. Sukkot. We, we went to a Sukkot thing. We had pizza. Yeah, modern version. <laughs> Yeah, they build booths, right? That all came out of this religious renewal because people heard something tough, but they were able to say, yes, that's holy. Now we're going to grow. Now we're going to become better. It doesn't make the news better to hear, but it makes it good to, good to respond to. Um, where am I? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Right. So we receive bad news on a personal level or heart. I don't want to say bad news. See, this is, this is the gift to me of this meditation on this text. Because it isn't bad news, right? And it isn't just hard news. And it certainly doesn't feel like good news. But if you can say that it's holy news, you have a way to respond to it. Hard and good at the same time. God is present here. God is doing good things. We receive this on a personal level when a kid comes home with a really bad report card right? That's not great. I'm not, but I'm really glad I know. That's holy news, right? When our spouse says to us, um, I've got a problem, you know, whatever, with you, with my job, whatever the thing is, that's frightening, 
hard, holy, now we can do something, right? When you go to the doctor and the doctor says, there's something that I want to look at more closely, I'm going to send you for more testing, holy, that's good news. We're glad to have that news, right? Corporately. As, as a people in Massachusetts, in, in, in the United States, globally, we hear really hard news on climate, right? Holy news on race relations in this country, tough. I'm talking to a room of white people right now, tough, tough. Boy, do we want to react. Holy news, right? On the pandemic, we hate the pandemic. We hate the pandemic. We need to listen to the news and allow God to work through it. Now, one nuance that isn't in this text is um, at the time that the, the people, the men, women, and children were listening to Nehemiah, Ezra Reed and Nehemiah help lead, they didn't question the authority or the integrity of Ezra and Nehemiah, right? That's just assumed that these are good people, good leaders with good information. And I was sort of laughing to myself. I was like, you know, so the priests are giving this good advice and the people are like, that's tough. I don't like to hear it. I'm crying, but okay, I'll say it's holy and I'll, I'll take it and do something good with it. I just like, if it were today, there would be like another group of priests who would pop up over here and they'd be like, no, 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 no. That's not a real book. That's not true. We don't like, right? We don't like it. We, we, we are suspicious of that book. We haven't seen that book in a long time. That's probably a false book, right? There'd be like this whole other narrative of like, no, no. Because people don't like to have to deal with the difficult feelings of hard news. We have whole industries of media built up right now that are based around saying what you see is not what you're actually saying. That's not actually true. We have whole industries that are spinning theories. People will do, go so far, they will go so far to say that what you're looking at isn't what you're actually seeing. I had a friend one time, many, many years ago, who was very clearly struggling with alcoholism. Very clear, evident to everyone. And I talked to him. And I said, you know, I'm concerned. How are you doing? Concerned for your health. And I was trying to, it's very delicate, right? Skirting around it. And he says, oh, no, no, no. I know what people are saying, but I'm telling you, there's not a problem here. I think that I have a brain tumor. I think I'm going to go to a neuroscience because I've definitely got a brain. I mean, the only reason that, you know, I'm behaving this way in my speech, oh, Okay. People will go to great lengths to make up other stories so that they don't have to internalize the force of difficult news. So how are we supposed to judge then? If Ezra and Nehemiah were trustworthy and they didn't have to worry and sort of parse out, are they telling us the truth? Are they good? Do they have integrity? How do we do it? Because certainly now we're in an environment where I mean, it's good. You do want to check out the facts. Like, if you have a bad diagnosis at the doctor, a second opinion is a good thing. Same thing with the mechanic, right? You want a comparison quote, right? You should, you should do a little research to see if this is accurate. But how are we to decide when we hear of different authority figures or folks who would, would put themselves in authority who are saying, this is the news? What do we do? The same qualities and characteristics that defined Ezra and Nehemiah define reliable news sources to us today. And that is when you can see the motive, when you can see the integrity, when you can see the track record, when you can see the methodology, and you know that it's consistent and fair and honest and deeply rooted in care and concern for the entirety of humanity. When you see that, then you know that you are dealing with a reliable source. We have to take that extra step today because we have so many competing voices and authority. But the main message that I want you to take away today, the one that I'm going to take away, occasionally I preach a sermon that really teaches me something. Amen? Anybody? Uh, okay. <laughs> right? You're like, oh, wow, I'm going to take this one. Holy news. Holy news. Sometimes it's hard to hear, but God is telling us something that we need to know 
so that we can grow and so that we can become more healthy. Just because it's hard and we don't like it doesn't mean that we say that it's wrong or false. We look for the presence of God there and see what we will do with this holy news. Amen. Mm. Okay, now, I'm, see, I like that sermon, so I'm all caught up in it, and I need to bring um, the MC back on board. Who's the MC this morning? Oh, me. That's me. I'm looking at her right there on the camera. Okay, so if you have prayer requests, please drop them in the comments. Um, we have, oh, a time of offering. Uh, people here in the building, there's an offering plate out in the foyer. Uh, people online, there's a donation link. Something else you can do with the donation link or the offering plate this morning. We always have opportunities for you to do things like this. Um, today, our Super Sunday is about um, care of the animals, especially animal rescue and adoption. Um, we're taking a financial collection, if you're far away and want to support this or nearby, for um, emergency surgery for animals that are abandoned or abused. It never occurred to me that if there's an animal that does not have a responsible owner that needs surgery, some, you know, how is that provided? Who pays for that, right? So there's a special fund at Nevin's Farm that's set up to pay for those emergency surgeries. That's what the money's going to. Here at the building, we're collecting uh, wet and dry cat food. Anyway, thank you for your support of the ministries of this church and of today, especially um, Nevin's Farm, MSPCA. Um, I think I'm turning it over to special. That's what I'm doing. Uh, I'm here, 100%. Okay, there you go. Good morning. So this is a song called Doubting Thomas by Chris Thiele. And in case uh, it starts to become um, worrisome, uh, Thomas, the apostle, who was the one who said, I'm not going to believe that you're really Jesus after he uh, showed himself to them unless I see the holes in your hands um, and the piercing in your side. And ultimately, Thomas uh, died a martyr. So even when we have doubts, um, that doesn't mean that we can't have the faith to overcome it. What will be left when I've drawn my last breath? Besides the folks I've met and the folks who knew me Will I discover a soul-saving love Or just the dirt above and below me I'm a doubting Thomas I took a promise I do not feel safe Oh, me of little faith. Sometimes I pray for a slap in the face Then I beg to be spared cause I'm a coward If there's a master of death I'll bet he's holding his breath As I show the blind and tell the deaf About his power I'm a doubting Thomas I can't keep my promises Cause I don't know what's safe Oh, me of little faith Can I be used to help others find truth? When I'm scared, I'll find proof that it's a lie. Can I be led down a trail dropping breadcrumbs to prove I'm not ready to die? Please give me time to decipher the signs Please forgive me for time 
that I've wasted I'm a doubting Thomas I'll take your promise Though I know nothing's safe Oh, me of little faith Oh, me of little faith prayers of the people. Uh, it's time for celebration and thanks. We always thank uh, somebody in the church community for doing things around here because Aldersgate runs on volunteers. Um, so yesterday there were some gentlemen engaged in the auspicious work of crawling in the ceiling space above the kitchen to insulate the pipes so that they wouldn't freeze in the cold weather. Uh, I think there were about four men involved in that, uh, got all full of insulation and whatever. Holy work, important work, we need the pipes not to freeze. Uh, let's thank George, Kevin, Bobby, and Bob. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, a special shout out to our friend, a friend of the church, Jeff Graves, who is a broadcast engineer um, and used those skills to come down here yesterday and help us to tune up our sound a little bit, uh, making some progress on that while we wait for our new equipment to arrive. He's helped to maximize uh, what we're able to do with what we have. So we appreciate Jeff Graves. I was feeling bad that we've been waiting like, I think six months now, seven months for our new electronics to arrive. And he told me that um, he had ordered something in February that just shipped. So I'm like, at least we're not alone, right? <laughs> there really are delays here. Okay, um, that's celebration and thanks. And, oh, the announcements are that um, the people here have been talking about Super Sunday throughout the service. Um, and oh, and so I did all the announcements already. Good for me. All right, prayer requests. Thank you. Thank you, everybody online, for submitting these prayer requests. Let's be in an attitude of prayer. Lord God, thank you for speaking us, speaking to us this morning, through music and through scripture and through the word, through the presence of one another in this place, God, that encourage us, encourages us, that strengthens us. God, we ask that you would equip us and build us up so that we can walk back out into the world stronger, more full of your love and more able to share it with the world around us. God, you know the concerns that we have as a community. First, God, I lift to you the concerns that rest in our hearts. Help us to keep our faith, to keep our trust as we wait for you to respond to these prayers of our heart. To those prayers, we add those uh, for those who are struggling with or in recovery from addiction and for those with mental illness, depression, and anxiety, God, and ask that you would preserve life and bring healing and wholeness we continue in prayer for Bob Kingsley's sister, Carol, and her cancer treatment, for Marie LaRose's friend, Marie Patrice, in hospice care, and for Eli Spicer recovering after a bicycle accident. God, we pray for all those who are quarantining and dealing with COVID and for the schools and the hospitals. God, give us strength and endurance. We pray for Lana, Lana Davies' sister and daughter, both having um, challenges uh, of various kinds, and for her great niece who's pregnant who has COVID. Uh, we pray for Kathleen Epstein's baby nephew who is on oxygen. God, we ask for healing for Sarah LaMonica. Uh, we pray for Bob Meredith's friend Mike Blair and others, Bear, and others who are hospitalized. And we pray for Robin Wilson's friend who's on hospice and struggling with this season of life. We pray for Ann Chumley's home church, Ann's an online friend from Tennessee, uh, that 
Church Trinity UMC, which was closed again today due to multiple COVID cases. God, there's joys among us today uh, for the great work of the vaccinations, the healthcare workers, the brave leaders. God, we give you thanks. We thank you for improving health for Martha Davies. We thank you uh, that she was able to come home from the rehab last Friday. And finally this morning, Lord, we thank you for the life of Roberta Devine, a member of the Ipswich River Community Chorus who was killed in a car accident about two days ago. Um, God, just be with the corral and be with um, her family and loved ones as we navigate this sudden and tragic loss. God, thank you for hearing our prayers. And now we ask that you would hear us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, so for those in the room, um, after our closing song, we will um, introduce and we'll, we'll do a couple minutes of visiting, uh, but then we'll, I see that uh, Heather Robertson has arrived from the MSPCA, so we'll turn it over to her. And because there's no lunch served today, um, we will probably be done by noon. So I encourage you to stay if you can. Also, the treats. I said no lunch. Sam said let's send them home with doggy bags because I was like, of course. Good dad joke, Sam. The doggy bags are human food. Um, I'm just saying that they are not intended for dogs. They are a treat for you. All right. God bless you all. It's so good to see you joining in today. All right. Let's all stand in solidarity and sing in our hearts, Be Thou My Vision. <laughs> 